um, we're going to actually create a frequency distribution table. And um, you guys are going to follow the steps that I tell you here because um, I want it done a certain way. So we're going to use this data set, which represents the number of calls for motorists per day for roadside service that was recorded for the month of December 2003. The results were as follows. Um, so 28 calls on, let's say, December 1st, you know, 122 calls on December 2nd. But that's what that um, set represents. So first things first, um, these are the steps to create a frequency distribution table. Now, I'm going to use this to find and create the frequency table for this here. Okay, so we have everything set up. So um, here's my table. So the leftmost column in this case is going to be the number of calls. Okay, number of calls, that's what this represents. And then the second um, column, of course, is your frequency, right? So we're gonna set this up. Okay, cool. Now, um, <clears throat> one, two, three, four, five. All right, so because I have five rows here, let's say we want five classes. So the first step, here's where I'm going to show my work. The first step says determine the number of classes. Now, you know, if you're making your own frequency table, by all means, you guys can do whatever the heck you want. But what I'm going to do is give you for this class, I'm going to give you the number of classes that I want so that everybody has the same frequency table. So in this example, we're going to do five classes. So yellow is for this example, right? White is in general. So for this example, we want five classes. So I have five rows, one, two, three, four, five, okay? Five classes. Calculate the class width. Now, once you determine the number of classes, which you're going to be told, again, to find your class width, you're going to take the maximum data value, and actually this is in general, so not just for this example, this is how you're going to find your class width after I tell you the number of classes. You're going to take the maximum data value minus the minimum data value and divide by the number of classes. Okay? So, for this example, Let's go find the maximum data value. What is the biggest number in this data set? So 217 looks like the biggest number here, right? 217, do you see anything bigger than that? 217, no, it looks like 217 is the biggest number. So 217 is my maximum data value, okay? I like it to be nice and thin. 217 minus. The minimum data value. What is the smallest? Okay, so 28 looks like the smallest data value. Do you guys see one smaller than that? 28 is the smallest one. I don't see anything smaller than 28. So I'm going to say minus 28 here, divided by the number of classes, which I told you I want to be 5. Okay, so it is equal to. So here, I'll do it on my calculator for you. Um, and this is my basic calculator right now. As we go higher into this course, you're going to see um, my TI-84 and my TI-83 come out, my graphing calculator come out, because there are a lot of cool tricks we could do there. So 217 minus 28 equals, then divided by 5, 37.8. Now, this is interesting, okay, because you don't typically see a class width that's not a whole number. So what are you going to do if your class width is a decimal? You're going to round up to the next whole number. So 38 is going to be our class width for this particular frequency table. Take the maximum data value minus the minimum data value, divide by the number of classes, which is what I'm going to give you because I want everybody's frequency table to be the same, round up to the next whole number. So 38 represents our class width. Okay? Now, I have my class width, I have the number of classes, let's start creating the table. Use the minimum value in the data set as your lower class limit, LCL, lower class limit for your first class. So the lowest value in my table, um, uh, in my data set is 28. Um, my lower class limit for my first class is going to be 28. Now, to find the upper class limit, remember that the class width was 38, right? So remember that 
you know, when I talked about this, I think I still have it, right? When I talked about this before, to find your class width, you take the upper class limit minus the lower class limit and add one. So what I'm going to do is 28 plus 37. 28 plus 37 to find the upper class. 65. Okay? So again, there we go, 65. So again, I'm going to start at the minimum value in my data set, right? I don't know what that's doing there. My upper class limit is going to be found based on the class width that we have. So I want my class width to be 38. So check it. What is, let's check it, 65 minus 28, 37. Don't forget to add one to that because I'm including the ends. So plus one is 38, so my class width is 38. Now, um, remember that, I mean, you're, imagine, I'm sure you're expecting the next lower class limit to be 66, but I want you to remember that <clears throat> The difference between each of the class limits, so the difference between each of the lower class limits should match the class width. So if I want to find the lower class limit of the second class, I'm going to do the lower class limit of the first class plus the class width to get the lower class limit of the second class. I'm going to add the class width again, plus 38. 104, that's going to give me the lower class limit of the third class. I'm going to again add 38 plus 38 to get the lower class limit of the fourth class, 142. I'm going to again add the class width 38 to get the lower class limit, 180. Of the last class, how do I know when to stop? Well, I wanted how many classes? I wanted five classes. I have one, two, three, four, five classes. Now that's one way of doing this. You know, you could do plus 37 to each of these to find the next. It's up to you. There's different ways to do this. I like to do it this way and then check. Remember, I'm always double checking. I'm always making sure things match. Now, I did find the lower, the upper class limit of the first class, so I could do the same thing that I just did to find the upper class limit of each of the classes after that and then verify everything. Make sure it all works. So I'm going to do the same thing again here. 65 plus 38, 103 is the next upper class limit. And notice, that's what you expected it to be because the lower class limit of the next class is 104. I'm expecting this to be 141. Let's see, plus 38, 141. Notice that everything is working out nicely. It's not a coincidence, right? Mathematics, everything actually works perfectly. Plus 38, 179. This is looking good. I'm doing things correctly, right? I can see that things are happening the way that it's supposed to be because the numbers are matching. Plus 38, 217. Okay? Now, you could verify. Now, this looks good. You could verify if you want. Let's look at this class. Let's double check. 179 minus 142 should be 37. Plus 1 is 38, so the class width is 38. Okay, so everything is looking good, correct? Now, just for the hell of it, if I want to list the lower class limits for this particular frequency table, what are they? 28, 66, 104, 142, 180. What are the upper class limits? 65, 103, 141, 179, 217, right? Um, just for <laughs> kicks and giggles, <laughs> Let's do, um, just for practice, I should say, the class midpoints. So for the first class, what I'm going to do is um, 65 plus 28 divided by 2. Ah, 65 plus 28 divided by 2 is 46.5. That is my first class midpoint, 46.5. I'm going to add 38, the class width, to get to the next class midpoint, 84.5. I'm going to add 38, the class width, to get to the next one, 122.5. I'm going to add 38 to, the, to get to the next class midpoint, 160.5. 
I'm going to <laughs> add 38. I don't know if this is like becoming a pattern. So you guys, 198.5. I'm going to verify that last class midpoint just to make sure. 217 plus 180 divided by 2 should be 198.5. Matching beautifully. Um, just for kicks and giggles. Class boundaries. Right, the first one should be 27.5, the next one 65.5, 105 um, 141.5, uh, what's the next one, guys? 179.5, let me move this up a little bit, um, and 217.5, right? How many class boundaries did I expect? I don't know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I should have one more class boundary, the number of classes, one, two, three, four, five. I have six class boundaries, five classes, cool. Five class midpoints, cool. All that's looking good. Now, I mean, technically I wasn't asked to do all this. Um, this was just for practicing what, what the last video covered. What I really want to do is finish up this frequency table. So let's do that. Let's finish it up. Um, now. I gotta fill in the frequency column. So what I say, I said, all right, we got it. use the class width to create your classes. Fill in your frequency column. Oh, okay, well, how do I do that? Well, let's find the frequency for the first class. I'm looking for all the numbers in this data set that are between 28 and 65 inclusive, including 28, including 65. So I like to mark them off as I do that. So between 28 and 65 inclusive, one. Between 28 and 65 inclusive. Two. Looks like two. Only two values in that interval, so the frequency of that class is only two. All right, let's look at the other one. Between 66 and 103 inclusive. Between 66 and 103. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 13 values in that interval, so that frequency is 13. Between 104 and 141 inclusive, 104 and 141, so that's this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, right, including 104, 8, 9, 10. Okay, so this frequency is 10. That was a large frequency, too, for this particular um, case. There's not a lot of data values here. Between 142 and 179. Between 142 and 179. So nothing on the top. Here. 1, 142, 179. 1, 2, 3. And that's it. This frequency is only 3. Only 3 values in this interval. Now 180 to 217 should be the rest. 1, 2, 3, 3. Okay, now I filled in my frequency column, but I always like to make sure that the sum of the frequency column is equal to the number of data values in the data set. So how many did I have here? 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 31, 31. So what is the sum of this frequency column? Well, let's see. I'll show you one here. 2 plus 13 plus 10 plus 3 plus 3 should be 31. It is, which is good, because that means that I included all of the values in the data set. So I like to verify you know, that my frequency column is correct based on just kind of like adding it up and making sure it matches how many numbers are in the data set. So this is how we create a frequency table. I'll tell you the number of classes. You guys calculate the class width. And then always start with the um, minimum data value here. This does not have to be the maximum data value. It's a coincidence in this case that it is, as long as it is at least the maximum data value. If this is more than the maximum data value in the data set, that's okay. We just want to make sure from here to here includes all these numbers. So if this is not at least the maximum, then I'm, I did something wrong with my frequency column. You have to change something. You did something wrong, go back and check. Because otherwise you won't be including all the numbers in your, in your frequency table. 